Hello agents and welcome to another daily episode of Target Loot Today, your daily farming guide for Wednesday, January 27th. In this series, we cover a lot. We got the Target Loot map, Dark Zone exclusives, highlights for the weekly vendor resets, and build and farming suggestions as well. This is Shadow Gaming, and if you're new to the channel and enjoy this video, consider pressing the thumbs up and subscribe buttons below, and if you didn't, a thumbs down. Always remember to hit those bell notification icons to all so you never miss a daily morning video. Comment below if you have any questions or feedback. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Alright guys, so starting off with the Dark Zones and of course Vendor Reset Highlights, which are always in that bottom left overlay, full of really good stuff this week. I'd highly recommend picking up that Dark Winter in DZ South, and then of course over in the DZ West area, I got the Death Grips that I'd recommend as well. And then the mop with the 10% armor on kill at the theater. And the White House has a good anarchist cookbook as well. I recommend all four of those and the contractor's gloves at the clan. Otherwise, in DZ West, we got Badger Tough. So you can farm for the Zero F's chest piece with Perfect Unbreakable, which is great for DPS hybrid builds. But I normally don't really recommend farming the Dark Zones unless it's a DZ exclusive or if you're farming for Dark Zone resources. Next up in DZ South, we got Wyvern Wear, so you can farm for the Claws Out Holster, which of course comes with 500% melee damage and 10% pistol damage, and is definitely worth it for any shield build user, and actually goes well with the next set that I'm about to talk about in the DZ East. And that of course is the Foundry Bulwark set, remember the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive, even if you are farming the DZs. But this is a really great set for tank builds if you're going to want to run that with the Emperor's Guard knee pads with that 1% armor regen and some bellstone armory. Then that is an amazing tank set that's great especially in legendary. Otherwise let's go check out now what we got on the north side. Alright agents, Northside Target Lou highlights. Starting off with the invaded missions this week, we got the Roosevelt Island, Tidal Basin Strongholds, Lincoln Memorial, and then Potomac Event Center, and then lastly Federal Emergency Bunker. For the north side, my first recommendation is some machine guns at Coney Island Ballpark. You got three exotics, the Lady Death, the Backfire, and the Chatterbox. All three of those are actually really good. The Backfire, you need a lot of hazard protection, about 90% or so to get rid of the bleed. Otherwise, the Chatterbox, I'll put my you know quick five and a half minute video guide in the top title card right now on how to get it because it is a quest only exotic. And it's actually easier to farm the quest than it is SMG targeted loot. And the Lady Death, you could just straight up farm for. And always remember the Dark Winter and the Apartment SMGs are DZ exclusives, but please pick up that Dark Winter in the DZ South this week and roll that third attribute slot for 10% damage targets out of cover. It's rolled well enough to definitely be worth picking up a couple of them. And then lastly, I'd pick up the Safety Distance with Perfect Outsider and the Grudge with Perfect Vindictive. Those are two named SMGs that do drop outside of the Dark Zone and are worth it on you know their respective builds. And then next up we got MMRs at the amusement park, so you got the Mantis and the Nemesis, those are the two exotic MMRs in this game. The Mantis you could just straight up farm for and is actually, personally in my experience, the best actually exotic or MMR to actually use on a headshot damage build. And the Nemesis you're going to need to get Puck's blueprint from Grand Washington Hotel when it's invaded and then craft it at the White House before it joins the general target to lose so pool, so keep that in mind when you're farming for it. Otherwise, the named ones I'd recommend would be Ekem's Long Stick with Perfect Ranger and the White Death, and I would roll Boomerang, Rifleman, or Ranger on it. Those are the three best rifle talents and marksman rifle talents. And then lastly, we got Holsters at Manning National Zoo, so the three exotics is the Waveform, which you can get at Season 4 Level 90 reward. And then of course, Dodge City Holster and the Impale Dynasty Holster, and all three of those are actually really worth it. Dodge City for DPS like headshot damage builds or pistol builds and then Imperial Dynasty for skill damage and status effects and same with the waveform. And then of course you can farm for the forge holster that gives you 50% shield health which is equivalent to an extra skill tier worth of shield health. And then of course Kinley College is closed and the summit you pick your own target to lose so let's go check out what we got on the west and east sides of Washington DC now. Alright guys, West Side Target Lou highlights. Starting off with gear sets, I always skip Tip of the Spear because I just absolutely do not recommend it, just like hardwired. But we do have True Patriot today at the Pentagon, which I very, very much recommend. I recommend the build that I put in the top title card right now. It's my True Patriot SMG build. I run four pieces, the Memento backpack, and then a Sokolov chest with Intimidate. And then of course I always use the Lady Death with that, and the mop with 10% armor on kill is the secondary. 
And I'm the original person that put that build out and I really, really enjoyed it. I just kind of thought of this crazy idea back in early October and really it's, you know, a very popular build now and I'm glad a lot of people are enjoying it. Next up, our probably big highlight for today would be LMGs at Lincoln Memorial. Definitely worth farming for. You know, you got the Bullet King and the Pestilence as the, the two exotic LMGs in this game. So the Bullet King, you never have to reload. It's just, you know, not infinite ammo, but you just don't have to reload. But it has a lower base damage. And then, of course, the other one is the Pestilence. It's damage tick. You can get to over a million if you base it off of weapon damage since it's not technically a status effect. But of course it does have like a 6 second reload speed which you could fix with like brace on your chest piece or something. You know I'll put a build in the top right card that'll help with that. And then otherwise there's a lot of named LMGs in the bottom left overlay. Remember the Black Friday is a DZ exclusive. The rest of them are all stuff you could farm for in the light zone. And then of course Aces and Ace in Downtown West. Definitely worth farming for for any headshot damage build and it stacks really well against the all high end headshot damage build. And that's going to be three piece aces and eights, two piece of Raldo holding, of course one's going to be a backpack with vigilance or composure, your personal preference, I like vigilance. And then of course you're going to want that chain killer chest piece with perfect headhunter and you want to run the mantis and then Ekim's long stick or the white dev. For normal target Alu, let's just get started at this white house area because sometimes I miss it. You can get the force multiplier backpack with perfect combined arms giving you 30% skill damage every 3 seconds you land a shot on an NPC if you want to farm for that today at the white house since there is 2 control points here to farm for. And then of course that's a great backpack. You could use tech support if you want but I'd recommend putting it on a Hanyu or Wyvern Wire backpack since the percussive maintenance backpack with perfect tech support is on an Alp Summit backpack and that's a repair skills you know healer build type brand so it's not really worth it. And then next up we got knee pads at West Potomac Park. So you could farm of course the two exotics. You got the ninja bike messenger knee pads and Sawyers both of which are wildly different. Ninja bike is for run and gun you know you vault or cover to cover for some 25% bonus armor and then of course instantly reload your equipped weapon and then Soares is the opposite you sit still and gain 1% weapon damage every you know second up to 30% weapon damage otherwise you can farm for the fox's prayer knee pads which gives you 8% damage to targets out of cover and those are really better than the two exotics because that damage to targets out of cover is multiplicative damage the best type of damage in this game just the same thing as when it says amplified damage and of course if there's Overlord I'd recommend farming that over knee pads for those foxes prayer. Otherwise we got Bellstone at Foggy Bottom if you want to farm for that everyday carrier with Perfectly Efficient. And now I don't you know really recommend it because I don't ever use it or ever have but if you have comment below and let me know what build you use with it I'd like to check it out and maybe try it out. Otherwise the Liquid Engineer Backpack with Perfect Bloodsucker unfortunately is a Dark Zone exclusive so you're gonna have to wait for Bellstone or Backpacks to be targeted loot in the Dark Zone. And then we got mass over here at Bank HQ. You could farm the two exotics, Coyote's Mass for your DPS builds and Vile Mass for your skill damage and status effects builds. Both of those are not quest exotics, you could just straight up farm for them. And then of course you can also farm for the named Punch Drunk Mass which gives you 20% headshot damage and is perfect for an all high end headshot damage build. And I usually would recommend farming Douglas and Harding because I always recommend farming the brand not the type. But if Douglas and Harding is not here you could of course farm Mass instead. And really the only other you know couple I'd recommend is a Rolla Holding at Federal Emergency Bunker. I always recommend rallying this with weapon damage, weapon handling and headshot damage. Crit hit chance and crit hit damage don't really matter on a headshot damage build. You just want to get that headshot damage above 200% and you're in the clear. And then lastly, assault rifles at west end area. So of course you got two exotics that you can farm for besides the eagle bearer, which is still a dark hours raid exclusive. That's the chameleon with adaptive instincts and the capacitor with capacitance. Both of those are amazing. The chameleon is actually really good if you take that Sokolov chest piece from True Patriot and swap it out for a Fenris. And then you got, you know, an AR build that's really great. Otherwise, the capacitor can give you up to 60% skill damage and 45% weapon damage. So it goes great on any skill damage or even DPS hybrid builds. But you first have to get it from the Summit 5 challenges on any difficulty, so keep that in mind as well. Otherwise, there's some named assault rifles in the bottom left overlay. There's a lot that I would recommend. The Rail Splitter is a Dark Zone exclusive, of course. But what I would recommend is probably the Burnout name for Moss, the Mechanical Animal, and the Test Subject with Perfect Instinct. Alright guys, now let's go just go check out the east side area now. 
All right, Agents East Side Target Alu highlights, starting off with the gear sets, which is where all of them were hiding, I guess. So, Hardwired, I'm gonna skip, of course. Rigor, I definitely recommend over Hardwired because it gives you instant cooldowns instead of 30 second cooldowns, which Hardwired does. And this is definitely the successor, but I just don't have a build recommendation just yet. I'm sorry. Now what I do highly recommend is Hunter's Fury at Jefferson Plaza today. I'll put my favorite Hunter's Fury build in the top title card right now. And that of course is four pieces of Hunter's Fury, the Death Grip Gloves and the Memento Backpack, running the Dark Winter and the Scorpio Exotic Shotgun as the secondary. And you know, in most of my gameplay footage you see me running that, and that's because that's my absolute like favorite build to run in this game solo. And of course, if you don't have those death grip gloves, you know, you can do an alternative build or you can just buy them, I believe, in the DZ West vendor this week. Or you could use a Sokolov chest with Intimidate or what I use is Obliterate, four piece Hunter's Fury in the Memento backpack, and still use the Dark Winter in the Scorpio. And then of course we got Strikers at American History Museum. I only ever recommend running three pieces of this. Four pieces is never worth it. They kind of just ruin Strikers in my opinion for this game. And Hunter's Fury is probably the successor to that since it kind of heals you and gives you all this extra damage which Striker was supposed to do. And it did that great in Division 1, but of course it does not do that in Division 2. And then the last gear set we got is a close protocol at District Union. I'll put my fire damage build in the top title card right now. And that's my favorite one all time. Four piece, you know, close protocol. You got the Imperial Dynasty holster and then one piece of Golong gear for an extra 10% status effects. And I always run that with the Firestarter Chem Launcher and the Stinger Hive. And for the weapons, you know, you could use that Grudge with Perfect Vindictive. You could use the Carnage with Perfect Sadist. You know, you could use all sorts of good weapons that are good, you know, against, you know, burning on fire in enemies such as the pyromaniac named AR and whatnot and the harmony as well. For normal target Alu, we'll start off with shotguns at Southwest. You got of course the two exotic sweet dreams uh, with the Sandman talent and then you got the Scorpio with septic shock. The Scorpio you unlock season 4 level season level 55 I believe it is otherwise you just farm shotgun targeted loot. And with Sweet Dreams, you just farm it. You know, you can melee one hit kill any red or purple barred enemy every 15 seconds or so. And it's great for skill builds and all, but I think that the Scorpio is better because it goes on tank, skill, DPS, every type of build. And then of course the four best shotguns in this game would be that rock and roll shotgun with perfectly extra. Probably my favorite would be the mop with 10% armor on kill. And the custom M870 and the marine super 90. And I always roll close and personal as the talent on any of those shotguns besides the rock and roll. Next up we got rifles at space admin. So you got two exotics, the merciless and the diamondback. The merciless is alright with three piece striker, braced as the chest piece talent or weapon handling on all six pieces of your gear. And then of course the diamondback hits really hard but it only has like five shots in the magazine or clip or whatever so it's, it's good in pvp and pve but it's just got low magazine size. Otherwise, the named rifles I recommend is the Baker's Dozen with Perfect Lucky Shot for you console users out there. And then the Surge with Perfect Spike. Both of those are really great, especially since the Harmony with Perfect and Sync is a Dark Zone exclusive rifle. And then of course over here we got Golong Gear at Jefferson Trade Center. You could farm that Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked, which goes great on an ongoing direct to bleed damage build that I'm about to talk about. Or you could pick up the one at the White House, of course. But for ongoing directive, it's great for bleed damage DPS builds. And I'll give you two right now, which is the ones I always give you guys, right? It's four piece ongoing directive and then Ridgeway's Pride. And then you always want to run that Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked. That's my favorite one. And then the secondary one would be four pieces ongoing directive, the Badger Tough Backpack with Creeping Death, and a Vile Mask. And I always run the Carnage with Perfect Sadist. Next up we got Providence Defense over here at Capitol Building Stronghold. You could farm the Sacrifice with Perfect Glass Cannon. Definitely worth it if you guys like Glass Cannon and you're able to stand being that squishy. It amplifies all damage you deal by 30% but it amplifies all damage you get by 60% so you kind of just turn into paper. But you do deal the most damage in the entire game for sure overall and that's all type of damage for skill or DPS. And then really my last recommendation would be chess pieces over here at the downtown uh, east area. You can farm the tardigrade, that's an exotic chess piece that's great for support teams with bonus armor. And then of course the Ridgeway's Pride if you want to re-farm it or if you want to farm it with a friend who has already completed the project from the summit and then they're able to share it with you and I believe that actually completes the project one of my subscribers let me know about. And I almost missed it, but there is gloves at Federal Triangle if you want to farm those BTSU data gloves today. They're Black Tusk, great pair of gloves that you can run on a skill build. 
and you can ride for skill damage or healing. You know, it grants overcharge to you and any ally that's at skill tier 6. Otherwise, that's about it for the DC area. Let's go check out New York City last. Alright, agents, finally, New York City target loot highlights. Now, let's go over the gear sets real quick. We got Future Initiative at Wall Street. So, of course, the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive, just like Foundry Bulwark. Now, what I would do is get an Alp Summit chest piece with the Empathetic Resolve, and then a backpack with Safeguard, you know, Richter Kaiser or Alp Summit. And that's just as good as the Raid exclusive, you know, build with the chest and backpack. And then we got Negotiator's Dilemma at Financial District. If I got enough cards, I'll put my double LMG Negotiator's Dilemma bill in the top title card. And that's four piece Negotiator's Dilemma, the Coyote's Mask, and then Group of Sumbro Gloves, or you can run Contractor's Gloves if you want to run the Pestilence or the Bullet King, and the Group of Sumbro Gloves if you're looking more for an AR or SMG damage build with this. And then here's the two ones that I was talking about, Overlord at Liberty Island. This is where I'd recommend farming the Fox's Prayer, and Douglas and Harding would be great if you're farming that Punch Drunk Mask. But either way, they'll drop Mass Target of Loot, Knee Pad Target of Loot, but I just prefer the brand over the type. It seems to yield better results. And then, of course, the last few I'll recommend is we got backpacks over here at the Tomb. So there's two exotics. You got the Memento with Kill Confirmed and the Acosta's Go Bag with one in the hand. Acosta's Go Bag is pretty good and is similar to BTSU gloves with granting overcharge and all sorts of other stuff on top of that. But then of course the Memento I think is just the best exotic gear piece in this game. It's definitely worth getting and anyone that missed it from Season 3 rewards, just remember you can farm backpack target to loot and it will eventually drop. And then the last few I'll mention is Grupo Sombro Stranded Tanker. Definitely remember one piece for DPS builds, two piece for explosive skill damage builds with artillery turrets and seeker mines. And then of course Walker Harrison Co. at Pathway Park is great with that chain killer chest piece with perfect headhunter on it. Definitely recommend that for any headshot damage build, its proposition is too great. I mean it deals I believe 125% of your killing blow, so you end up doing so much damage. I mean I probably can get over 20 million a headshot just with that aces and ace headshot damage build I mentioned earlier. And then any, anyone, you know, working on an SMG build, you know, you want to run two bridges for Sokol of Concern. I never recommend skill attachments, you know, never farm for these. Alright agents, well that was your daily farming guide for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, consider pressing the subscribe and like buttons below. And if not, of course, give it a thumbs down. If you'd like to become a member of this channel for extra support and exclusive perks, you can click the join button down below. And thank you and shout out to all of my channel members. I really appreciate all the help. Always remember to check the video description and pinned comment below. You know, I got support from my channel, of course, like the merch store, the Discord and clan for you guys, as well as myself. Gear and weapon spreadsheets, weekly vendor, all reset, all that good stuff is in that video description below and pinned comment. Anyway, guys, take care and be sure to stay tuned for more daily Division 2 coverage. This is Agent Shadow signing off. I will see you in the next video. Take care, agents, and have a wonderful day.